Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and in this video I'm going to go over solving linear equations, a complete strategy, as well as talk about identities, contradictions, and literal equations. Here's the general strategy to solve an equation. Simplify each side of the equation and clear all fractions. This includes distributing if you can, combining any like terms, and multiplying both sides of the equation by a common denominator for the fractions that you have. The second step is to collect all the variable terms together on one side of the equation. A lot of students like to always collect them on the left side, but really you can collect them on either side. Next, collect all the constant terms on the other side of the equation. The final step will be to divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of the variable term, and then you can check your solution at the end. We're going to go through several examples building in uh, levels of complexity. First, there's no distributing or like terms to combine on either side, no fractions to worry about, and my one variable term is on the left hand side, so I need to get all the constant terms to the other side. And I'm going to do that by adding 7 on both sides, and I end up with 3x equals negative 39 finish by dividing both sides by 3, x equals negative 13, and that's my solution. Now, if I were to check it, I would take that value back to the original equation, plug it in for x, and make sure uh, the left side was equal to the right side. 3 times negative 13 is negative 39, minus 7 is negative 46, so this checks. Uh, from here on in, I'll leave the check to you. In this example, a uh, little different, we have variables on both sides, so we want to collect those on one side first. And I can do that by subtracting 2x from both sides. That will collect my variables on the left. I could also have subtracted 7x from both sides to collect them on the right. Combining 7x minus 2x is 5x. Then I want to get the constants to the other side, so add 18. 5x equals 50, and I finish by dividing both sides by 5, and I'm left with x equals 10. If you were to check this solution, make sure that you plug in the 10 for both the x that's on the left side and the x that's on the right side. Okay, in this example, notice we have a lot more terms. Uh, if you have more than four terms, you know that you're going to have to combine some like terms before you can proceed. On the left side, I have 9b and negative 3b to combine. On the right, I have 21 and 13 to combine. 9b minus 3b is 6b minus 14. On the right-hand side, I'm going to copy down the 2b, and then 21 plus 13 is plus 34. Get all the variables to the left by subtracting 2b. So I have 4b minus 14 equals 34. Get the constants to the right side by adding 14 on both sides. And finish by dividing both sides by 4. I'm left with the solution b equals 12. Okay. Uh, as we look at this problem, we can see instantly that we have an opportunity to distribute 2 into this first set of parentheses, and that's where we'll begin. 2 times 3y is 6y, minus 2 times 4 is 8, and then we copy the rest of the terms down, both sides. Uh, notice I have some like terms to combine next. 6y minus 33 equals negative 9. Um, I've got all the variables together on the left, so I need to move the constants to the right, add 33 to both sides, 6y equals 24, finish by dividing by 6, and our solution is y equals 4. Okay. So in the last two examples, what we've seen is you want to clean up both sides of the equation first before you attempt to solve. Here's one with a little more distributing to do. In this example, I'm going to distribute 2 into the first set of parentheses. And what am I supposed to do with this? 
Well, if I treat this like it's a minus 1, probably the safest way to go, I'm going to distribute a negative 1 into the second set of parentheses. 2 times 2x minus 2 times 3. Negative 1 times x is minus x. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. And copy down the right-hand side. Notice what's happened to those two terms. That minus sign gets distributed through and changed the sign of both terms on the inside. Combine like terms. 4x minus x is 3x. Cross those off so I know I've used them. Negative 6 minus 7 is negative 13. I want to collect all the variables on one side. I can do that by subtracting x. Common mistake here for students is to think uh, 3x minus x just gets rid of the x. Again, you want to think of this as it's 1x. So 3x minus 1x is 2x. Still have an 8 on the other side. Uh, get the constant to the right. 2x equals 21. And divide by 2. And that does not divide evenly, and I can't reduce it either. So my solution, x equals 21 halves. Let's try another one. Finally, the fractions. Uh, we take a look at the three denominators, 4, 3, and 6. And I need to figure out what's the common denominator for those three fractions. And it's the number 12. I can now multiply both sides of the equation by 12 or distributed to each term. So 12 times 2x, 12 times 3 fourths, 12 times 2 thirds x, and 12 times 5 6. 12 times 2x, there's no fraction to cancel out here, so I just multiply those straight out, and that's 24x. Minus 4 and 12 reduce to be 1 and 3. 3 times the remaining 3 is 9 equals on the right hand side, 3 divides into 12 4 times, times the remaining 2x is 8x, and then finally plus 6 divides into 12 twice, 2 times the remaining 5 is 10. Okay. Let's get all the variables together, subtract 8x both sides, 16x minus 9 equals 10, Move the constants to the right, add 9, 16x equals 19, and if we divide both sides by 16, we're left with x equals the irreducible improper fraction 19 over 16. So there's our solution set. Identities and contradictions. An equation that's always true, regardless of the value substituted for the variable, is called an identity. In that case, the solution set is the set of all real numbers. And we denote the set of all real numbers with this symbol, R, that has the extra back on it, you can think of it. What that means is that no matter what number you pick, it's a solution. It's an equation that's true all the time. Now, an equation that's always false is called a contradiction. And such an equation, no matter which number you select, it will not be a solution. So this type of equation has no solution. And we write that symbolically, the circle with the line through it. That denotes the null set or empty set. Now the hard part here is being able to figure out when is an equation an identity, when is an equation a contradiction. And we'll try a couple of examples to help you with that. First, this looks like any old equation. Um, I've got some like terms on the left. 2x plus x combines to be 3x, and the 3 stays. On the right-hand side, I need to distribute 3 times x plus 3 times 1. Now, the next step in solving an equation would be to collect all the variable terms on one side. So I'm going to get rid of this 3x by subtracting it, and I have to do the same thing on the left-hand side. And watch what happens. In both cases, 3x minus 3x is 0. So I'm left with the equation 3 equals 3. When the variables all disappear, you know that you have a special equation. It's either an identity or a contradiction. To determine which one it is, you want to take a look at the resulting equation and figure out if it's true or false. 
3 equals 3 is true. So this equation is an identity, and its solution set is the set of all real numbers. Here's one with a little less work to show the same point. Uh, if I want to collect all the variables on one side, I subtract 5x from the left and the right, and all the variables are gone. I'm left with the equation 7 equals 2, which is false. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, sometime we'll get together. I'll give you uh, $2, you give me $7, and we'll trade as long as you like. Right, this is a false equation contradiction and we write that the solution set is the empty set. One last concept here has to do with literal equations. A literal equation is an equation that contains two or more variables and what we usually do is we solve the equation for one variable in terms of the other. So we'll have end up with something like um, x equals 3y plus 2z minus 5 where we've solved for one variable in terms of all the others. The steps for solving a literal equation are a lot like solving a regular equation. We just have to treat the other variables as if they're constants. Here's an example. I want to solve this literal equation for y. So I need to get any term that doesn't have y away from this term. And I can do that by subtracting 3x from both sides. So I'm left with 2y equals 9 minus 3x. I could also have written that as 2y equals negative 3x plus 9. They're both equivalent. Um, if I have 2 times y equals some number, I divide both sides by 2. So here I'll divide by 2. The only thing that's different is I can't simplify this expression at all. So I just rewrite it y equals 9 minus 3x over 2. If you're in my online class, uh, the suggested homework for this section, 1 through 6, the vocabulary problems, 7 through 67, every other odd, and 81 to 91 odd. If you have any questions or comments on this video or anything else, or if you've got a request for a video that I can put together for you on YouTube, you can reach th me through the contact page on my website, and the address of the website is George Woodbury. Com. Thanks for watching and good luck.